Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning. Kelly won't be joining us today, at least on film. Are you going to make any comments today? No. Why not? Tired. Why are you tired? We went to a party last night. We went to a party last night? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You had fun? I had fun. You had a lot of fun? Lot of fun. Did you maybe have too much fun? There's no such thing as too much fun. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> I think there is such a thing as too much fun. And I think Kelly had it. I gotta go make breakfast. Really? I didn't think you were, I didn't think you were gonna be able to do breakfast today. Uh, well, I how, don't wanna make it, but I wanna eat it. How about we do scrambled eggs? It doesn't make a difference. I know. The bacon's the rough part. Okay. The bacon's the best. No, okay. Pain the ass to well, Kelly's going to go make breakfast. So I'm sitting here. Like as you can see, I've got my binoculars. I've got a Peterson Field Guide for Eastern Wildflowers. And. Don't biscuits sound good? What? Don't biscuits sound good? They do sound good. Yeah. Biscuits. <laughs> That's what my belly needs a biscuit. <laughs> Kelly needs biscuits. That means she had a lot more fun than she thinks last night. <laughs> so. <laughs> Kelly's making biscuits. So today's breakfast is bacon and eggs and biscuits and this nice big glass of ice cold Pepsi. Yeah, mm -mm -mm. I'm drinking ice water. Yeah. So today we are going to go and take a look at a certain plant. By the way, this is a piece and field guide for wildflowers. I used to have these as a kid. And so years ago, my wife would buy these kind of as a memory because all my field guides are all beat up. So she bought me all the Peterson field guides again. I haven't really used them in years because I am, I've read them so many times. I have, of course, gained probably 100% of the knowledge, no, about 2% of the knowledge in here. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring it out today because I had to look up something that I couldn't remember. But what we're going to look at today is, see, I'm, I'm filming this with one hand. And uh, Kelly is complaining because the party was outside and apparently she lost about a pint of blood last night. So today, we're talking about this little guy right here, the Great Lobelia. It is... The Great Lobelia. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so majestic. Yeah, is it? <laughs> like Wizard of Oz, uh, like behind the curtain. The, we're going to go visit the Great Lobelia. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Lobelia is an eastern wildflower native. Oh boy. But <laughs> uh, one of our first rescues, and uh, we're going to go visit the Great Lobelia. The Great Lobelia. Say it one more time. The Great Lobelia. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go visit the Great Lobelia in just a moment. Hold on. How exciting. <laughs> Jersey, would you like to come with me to go see the Great Lobelia? You look super enthused. Apparently, oh, there's a noise in the forest. Okay, we're off to see the Great Lobelia. Kelly, uh, we're gonna go see the Great Lobelia. The Great Lobelia. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, we don't have to go far to see the great Lobelia, because he's kind of omnipresent in the garden. He is everywhere. So here is one of the great Lobelias we have in the yard. This one wasn't planted here. It goes to seed. And as you can see, this is growing at the border of a perennial garden right at the edge of the patio. Great as in the name, there's great blue flowers on here. This one is about two feet tall. And it is just coming into bloom. 
What's nice about the great Lobelia is that it is a late... What? Oh, you have come to see the great Lobelia. Would you like to see the great Lobelia? It's right here. No, no, it's not there. The great Lobelia is over here. So anyway, this is uh, one of the, um, a great native uh, plant. Uh, if you're a butterfly or a hummingbird uh, gardener, this blooms late summer, early fall. So it kind of is a plant that will extend the blooming season of your yard. But uh, easy to grow. It also likes uh, wet feet, so uh, as, uh, it can grow in damp areas. In fact, we're going to show you we have them growing in the bog garden as well. Um, there are multiple varieties of them. This is the native. I, I think they have cultivars now that are white. And of course, there's uh, Lobelia cardinalis, which is uh, uh, red. So if you're a patriotic gardener, uh, you can do a red, white, and blue garden, and it's pretty cool. But uh, hummingbirds love this, as you can see. Uh, tubular flowers here, white throat, but uh, pretty cool plant. So we're going to go down to the bog garden and take a look at that. And uh, on the way, we're going to take a look at Salvia miniata. This is Salvia miniata that we have planted in a pot in the middle of some ferns for the uh, hummingbirds. A great plant. It's like it has pretty velvety looking red flowers, kind of like a Christmas stocking. But anyway, we're going to go see some more great lobelias. I just realized I have more great lobelias growing right behind me. Here's some right here. These are in fuller bloom. And you can kind of see what they look like. Again, all of these are a rescue from uh, a single plant that I found about 20 years ago with my kids uh, in, from a construction site. We saved them. We've got a little snowberry growing here. Uh, here's another great fall bloomer for butterfly gardeners. Um, this is floss flower. Um, this will be blooming soon. And uh, it again, for the late butterflies, especially monarchs flying south. This is a great uh, plant to plant your butterfly garden. It also likes a little bit of wetness, but uh, this is certainly not wet here. This is a regular perennial garden. This will soon be blooming. And uh, we plant this for the butterflies. And we've got more great lobelia here. Now we really are going down to the bog garden. Garden, and uh, this used to be uh, nothing down here. We planted some grass and then put some beds around it. We used the deer used to eat everything. So now we have a complete garden down here. And one of them is our bog garden, which we showed you on several other videos. But um, as you can see, we have the great lobelia planted here. Striking blue flowers. Uh, easy to grow. Let this thing go to seed and you'll get uh, others in the spring. We actually have some out front yard and they're growing along the edge and uh, we pull all the seedlings up out of the lawn so they don't get mowed and then we spread them around the garden. So you, you can see this guy's growing in the bog garden with pitcher plants, uh, fr uh, orange fringe orchids, uh, monkey flower, blue flag iris. So at home in the bog and in the perennial garden. These were seedlings this year, so in one year you can see they bloomed. I'll show you over here, we have some more. This is slope, so the water runs through here, and you can see. We have more scattered throughout here. They're going to seed and fill this whole area in in the spring, along with some Japanese primroses, yellow-eyed grass, blue-eyed grass, 
and various other plants. We have some Laetris over here that's going to go to seed. And we have a small little frog pond here. Uh, we have a small seedling of what I mentioned before of the red uh, cardinal flower. That's uh, Lobelia cardinalis. It's going to bloom. And this one, before we put in the deer fence, was eaten down to nothing. We didn't even know it survived, so that's a good sign. But the Great Lobelia, as Kelly likes to say, is a perfect native. It's an easy to grow plant, something you should have in your garden. It extends the blooming season of any pollinator gardens, uh, hummingbird gardens, and uh, you'll enjoy it. It's easy to grow. Uh, get it.